The Prey is a very interesting and rarely seen film. It's uh, very difficult to come across this day and age. The first time I actually saw it, I was eight years old. Uh, as far as I know, it's never been re-released onto DVD. The film was directed by Edwin Brown. The filming occurred during 1978 and was filmed in Utah, uh, roughly over the course of two weeks. Although the film does take place in Colorado, the film did experience a limited theatrical release in 1994 and was later released onto VHS in 1988 by Thorn EMI Video. The film does follow a group of campers heading out to North Point for some camping. It is three couples heading out. This is basically just their vacation after having completed high school, going on a camping trip basically just before waiting to start up college. On a quick stop at the ranger station, the ladies in the group do meet up with uh, one of the forest rangers who later doesn't play very much useful a role in the film. He's just basically around as a quote-unquote pretty boy, although he's not that easy on the eyes. So in the tradition of most slashers, the group members are basically very quickly and easily picked off. Also following in basic tradition, one of the first couples which does get the axe is also the only couple which did have sex. So they are basically literally caught with their pants down. The moral of the story, don't have sex in the woods. So their things are basically packed up and removed. The following day, the remaining group members are baffled, obviously, not really sure if they packed up and left or if they went on ahead. After some, some debate, the remaining or existing group members decide to go on and continue with their trip and just leave sort of a, a notice or a letter behind for the other two members, which unbeknownst to them are dead. So they do leave a note letting them know that they've continued to to go on with the trip. But seriously, if members in your group mysteriously vanish, I'd say it's pretty much just time to pack it in and go home. If something's fishy going on, why stick around and, and wait to see what else is going to happen? So during this time, the park ranger uh, gets wind of another couple which never came back out from their camping trip, never checked back in. So he goes out to scope it out and this is where we do find out that years ago there was a very bad forest fire. There was a band or a group of gypsies which were burned very badly in some of the caves up in the area. There's also a hint that there was a very bad, badly burnt uh, young boy who scurried off and was never seen or heard from again. But he was obviously a survivor and not very human looking from what was left of him. So the climax of the film does arrive very quick and fast when the guys in the group decide to go rock climbing. The women are left behind to do some sunbathing in their swimsuits. Obviously, we can figure out what happens to the guys. It does not take a genius to figure out how they will meet their end. The women, however, do hear the men's screams. They quickly get dressed and do find the bodies. They are quickly pursued by this man, creature, beast thing. So during the ending chase, one of the young ladies is caught in a trap which had been set up earlier in the film. And we actually do get to see how the trap does work. She's just basically flung into the air and has her face smashed up against a tree, instant death. Big surprise. The remaining young lady, of course, is left behind to fend for herself. This is the time when the useless park ranger does show up with his rinky-dink little dart gun, uh, tries to dart the creature and defend her. Obviously, he underestimates the power of his little dart pistol and his weak strength, making the mistake of turning his back on the creature. He's killed. Duh. So, the young lady left behind with this beast creature you know, we, we do have the ending scene where he walks up and grabs at her. We then go through a, a montage of, of seasons and we later do hear the wails of a baby. So we obviously do find out his intentions were to find a wench to bear his bastard child. But, you know, monsters need love too and I guess even deformed freaks have their urges. At the very least, I will give the Beast credit in that he, he definitely has an eye. Not only does he pick out the best actress in the film, but also the prettiest girl in the lot. And it's very difficult not to feel sorry for her. I mean, 
she's obviously forced into a relationship she obviously did not choose, does not care for, and she has this creature child. So obviously her counterpart or companion is obviously a man with a face that not even a mother could love and thank goodness for her birth control. Unfortunately, in the woods, she did not have that advantage, so she is literally screwed on both accounts. Um, all in all, it's a very great film. Uh, if you can deal with an excessive amount of bug close-ups or, you know, if you're just a fan of cheesy or hard-to-find films, uh, you can definitely view a copy of this in clips on YouTube. For the nostalgia factor alone, it's definitely worth it. I hadn't seen the movie since I was eight years old. I'd been looking for it forever, so I definitely did en enjoy it. And if you do decide to take a look, I hope you enjoy it just as much as I did. But I will see you when I see you.